Gospel, chapter 1. Praise God. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. I wanted to look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. That's been brewing in my spirit, but I think I'm going to go with Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Beginning at the 26th verse. I want to read uh, a few of these verses. Uh, down in verse 38. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou, art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and the son, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want to talk this morning about the blessing and the burden. The blessing and the burden. Amen. I want to help you understand this morning that, 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 that you can't have one without having the other. Yes, sir. Amen. They come as a, a package. God doesn't mind giving us the blessing, but we have a problem with the burden. Tell it, tell it. We, we, we have been a, 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 an awesome nation. We, this is a, a great, fantastic world. And God has blessed this world in so many ways. And, and, and the United States of America has risen to be uh, a leader in the world in every way. And, and we have enjoyed much of the blessing of God. Here comes coronavirus. And we don't want the burden. Yes, sir. But I came to tell you, you can't have the blessing without also sharing the burden. Amen. Uh, we, 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 we enjoy it individually when, when God's hand uh, turns loose the blessing. Tell it. When we move into that new home, uh, we, we smile, we, 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 we love it because it's clear that it's evident of the blessing of God. But the burden is you have more of it to clean. That's right. <laughs> We, 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 we enjoy it when, when we get that managerial position. But, but the, the burden comes when you have to speak to employees about their behavior. We, 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 we love finding that beautiful girl to marry. That's the blessing. But the burden is when you no longer have extra money. <laughs> So you have, to, you, you have to deal with both the blessing and the burden. Amen. And, and, I, and I submit unto us this, this morning that, that the, the, the challenge for us is 
is to enjoy the blessing while the burden still exists. We, we can't wish it away. We, we can't turn it away. We, we have to continue to maintain our focus knowing that the same God who gave the blessing also permits the burden. In our scripture text for, for the morning, we, we find it true in the life of this young girl who comes to the forefront in scripture by the name of Mary. God has interrupted the world at this time of the beginning of the New Testament. There had been no word from Almighty God for 400 years. There had been no prophetic word for 450 years. There had been no miracle of God, especially in duplication, for more than 500 years. And suddenly God decides to intervene in his world. Yes, sir. By dispatching what I would call the first point, a divine angel, right. a divine messenger. Yes, sir. The, 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 the text says that in the sixth month, what is it, the sixth month, sixth month of what? The sixth month since God had already dispatched the angel the first time. He dispatched the angel Gabriel to an elderly couple whose name was Zechariah and Elizabeth. Yes, sir. And, and God announced, made an announcement to Zechariah while he was in the temple, uh, serving his turn as a priest. Perhaps lived in one of the Jewish towns near Bethlehem, should I say near Jerusalem. But on the course, as the priest did, similar to many, many women who are in the military reserve, they have courses of times when they have to go into active duty. So the priest served in courses of active duty. And it was Zechariah's time, and he was there in the temple in Jerusalem. And he saw this vision of this angel Gabriel who told him that he and his wife, his wife who was barren, Elizabeth, was going to have a child. Watch out. And that that child would be the forerunner of the Messiah. Now there are only two angels that are named in the scriptures. One is Gabriel, the other one is Michael. Now, Gabriel stood in the presence of God and he delivered words that came from God. And Gabriel was sent to Zechariah and sent to Elizabeth to tell them that they, being past age of conception, would receive a child. God is awesome. He does things. He does things that befuddles the mind of people. And he certainly confused and before the mind of that man. And because he, he staggered at that promise and because he hesitated to believe the angelic messenger, the angel told him, you're not going to be able to speak until this prophecy is fulfilled, until your wife delivers on this child. But the angel Gabriel wasn't through. The text says in the sixth month, so six months later, God sent the same angel back, this time north, to a small village. It says the city of Nazareth, but I've been there. Nazareth, and especially in that day, was hardly a city. Probably a township with maybe a thousand or two people. Dirt roads at that time, very, very hardly to be called a city, a nowhere, someplace. And sends him, listen, to an unknown household, to an unknown girl. Huh. Mm. Now, that's what the divine messenger was designed to do. God knows wherever we are. Yeah. May I help you understand that God is not ignorant of who you are? Yeah. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Yes, he keeps up with you. He knows your thoughts are far off. There's not a word in your mouth that he doesn't know altogether. There are no secrets that God doesn't know. Amen. And he knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what you need. And he does, here it is, secondly, the divine selection. And the divine selection was this young Jewish girl whose name was Mary. She was probably about 13, just barely out of puberty. 
But in our Jewish culture in that day, that's when girls got married. And they got married at 12 and 13 years old. The woman set their age at 10, but the Jewish rabbis set it at 12, 13 years old, so that when a girl got married, she could be usually sure that she was a virgin. And this girl was engaged already, of the Greek term for it is espoused, to a young man who's probably about 14, 15, whose name was Joseph. And this engagement, we talked about this one other time, this betrothal period usually lasted about a year. There was no contact. They lived separately during that year's term. And it was designed during that year of espousal to prove that the girl was pregnant, was, was a virgin, and, and to prove that the boy was faithful and able to take care of the girl. So he would usually work, build an apartment onto his father's uh, dwelling place. And that was a, a period of, of time that it was a proving ground. Marriages in those days were arranged by the parents, and so it wasn't about digits, it wasn't about texting, it wasn't about dating, it wasn't about going out with one another. Those marriages were prearranged. Sometimes I kind of wish that was still the case, because <laughs> sometimes I do think that parents have a little bit better insight into the selection for their children than sometimes the children do themselves. And now that I have grandchildren, I surely wish that I could have a hand in that decision. Are uh, you following what I'm saying? So, 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 this girl was, was, was no one that was known. She was not seeking notoriety. She was not walking around with a public sign advertising or campaigning that she would somehow be chosen by God. But God does the choosing. Yes, sir. Now, there's nothing in her name and culture, there's nothing in her family background that suggests that God should choose her. She wasn't given significance like Zechariah and Elizabeth. When the Bible says of Zechariah and Elizabeth, it says that they were righteous people. It doesn't say that about Mary. It just simply says to a virgin named Mary. So I want you to understand that when God chooses, and God chooses missionaries, and God chooses Christians, and God chooses who would be, it's not because of who you are and what you have done to make yourself so attractive to God, but he chooses in his own sovereign will whom he wills. And he selects this girl. That's divine selection. She was going about her own business. This would have been an exciting time for her to be planning a wedding. She probably, 12, 13 years old, would be full of giggles and would be full of girlfriends that she would be making plans with and all excited about. But here comes the great interruption. All right now. And may I say, if you're a child of God and you understand what this is, when God brings a call in your life, it is a great interruption. Your life would be fine. You, would, you felt like you were doing well. You were about your own business, going about doing your own thing. And here comes the mandate of God. All right. And so it was with this young girl that the angel Gabriel, this divine messenger, was sent to her in the sixth month of the pregnancy of Elizabeth. And the angel announces to her, Hell, young woman, you, you have a favor with God. Now, 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 I don't understand how in the world you think that God, when God comes, that God doesn't bring his favor. God says to her, through this angel, you are highly favored among women. And, and, and if God has anything to do with your life compared to the rest of the world, you too are highly favored. Anybody believe you're favored today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody know you've been favored? You can't explain the stuff that had happened in your life. The only way you can't explain it is to say, God, you favored me. God, you blessed me. You brought me from where I didn't think I could come from and where I didn't know I could be. It was your favor and your hand of grace and mercy that was on me. And I say all the time that if you see a turtle on a post, you know somebody put it down. So when you say that, and the Lord has a lot of hands on my life. You know that the hand of God did it. Right. It wasn't me in my own doing, but it was the grace of God. Amen. And so God's hand was on Mary's life. And, and the divine announcement 
that the angel calls to tell her is that, girl, you are going to be pregnant. And, and you're going to, to bear a son. And, 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 and Mary wasn't ignorant now, not at all. She understood biology. And, and, and she raises the question, how can these things be? Since I am a virgin, since I don't know a man, I have not been with a man, how in the world am I going to be free? Mm. And, and the angel goes on to explain to her that this thing is, 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 is not going to be from human origin. This is, this is divine. I, I, I hope you can see the parallel here. I, I hope you can see this morning that the, the transmission of the Holy Spirit into your life is not of human origin. The, the call of God, the, the summoning of God, the, the challenge of God, the, the mission of God that he has laid out for your life did not come because you signed up for it. All right. All right. But it was because of God's divine choice. Yes, sir. And regardless of how he communicated, he may have communicated through a human preacher. He may have communicated through a dream or vision in the Old Testament. God spoke to men in more than 75 different ways. But in these last days, God speaks to us always through the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through uh, other Christian witnesses. He speaks to us through our prayers. But most importantly, he speaks to us through our circumstances. You may have been in a situation where God spoke to your heart to let you know that you were divinely chosen for a work that he has given you. You tried to shake it, you tried to dance it off, you tried to do whatever you did to get rid of it, but he wouldn't let it go because it was of him. So the messenger comes with this message, girl, you, you're faithful and you're going, to be, you're going to be praying and you're going to have a child. But it's not going to just be any child. This is going to be the son of, of the Most High. Yeah. And, and he goes on to lay out the dimensions of the ministry of the Christ. That, 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 that he's going to receive the throne of his father David. The Messianic line, Matthew lays that out. to show us that Jesus is tied to the Messianic line of David. Yes, sir. And as a matter of fact, Joseph, who Mary was engaged to, was of that royal line. And if you look at the genealogy later of Mary, you'll find out that Mary, too, was tied to that royal line. And so God had set this thing up on purpose. Now, 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 what would be more of a blessing than to be able to bear the Son of God? Now, I want to I help you this morning to understand that, that none of us here today will ever be in the situation that Mary was in, 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 in the physical sense, that, that you won't bear Christ in your physical womb. But if you're called to God, you carry him. Oh, yes. and, 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 and that means you, 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 you're favored. You, you, you're blessed. You, you're blessed, but I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. But with that blessing, comes a birth. Amen. Oh man, this, this girl's life would be wrapped. And, 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 and sometimes the, the, the burden seems heavier than the blessing. Right. When, when you begin to consider now, now, now the angel wasn't through speaking. He's telling her about this child whose name is going to be Jesus and, and the grandeur of his life, the greatness of his life and the extent of his kingdom and then I want you to understand this would not be the first time that God had made such an announcement that a child was going to be born all the way back in the book of Genesis chapter 3 you would hear that right after Adam and Eve had committed the, the sin in the garden uh, 3.15 of Genesis we hear God talking about the seed of woman who's going to come and you got to know that, that, that God passed over a lot of women. Yes, sir. Down through the generations, every woman who came up pregnant probably thought, could I be bearing the son? Could I be bearing the seed? But God said, not you. Not you. Not you. 
And so when he chooses Mary, you got to understand that, that she was God's choice. And I want you to understand, regardless of what anybody else think about you, you are God's choice. No, nobody can do the work the Lord has for you. God looked at a lot of people on his way to choosing you, but he looked over them because he saw the uniqueness that you would bring and what you would offer and how you would be faithful in carrying out his divine will. So I want you to understand, God, 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 God knew what he was doing when he chose this girl. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, Mary is Mary has been given in the, in the Roman Catholic Church an exalted position that, that is beyond what the scripture text declares. And there's nowhere in the scripture text that, that indicates that there was anything different or unusual about Mary other than she was God's choice. Now, now you know, she, you know, I don't want to get into Roman Catholic theology, but I want to tell you this, that she didn't die for you. And she wasn't raised for you. And so she was not your sin back. But she was the gift box that God had chosen <laughs> for right, son. God. And may I help you understand, because sometimes we do, we do have that Messiah complex. Sometimes as ministers, we think that we can solve all the world's problems. Sometimes we think that we can solve everybody else's problem, but that's because we have that Messiah complex. But let me tell you, let me remind you that you didn't go to the cross for nobody. And God didn't resurrect you the third day, so you, you, you're not able to save nobody. But you can point people to who saved you is. And, and so, so, so you, you're divinely chosen, but your life is headed for interruption. This girl's life was headed for serious interruption. Angel goes on to tell him not only the grandeur of his son, Jesus, and all that he would be and what else he would do and all of the wonders about his life. And Mary had questions about that thing. How can this be? I don't know a man. And the angel tries to explain. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow him. God's going to put his DNA down. And the child that you'll bear will be 100% human because he's going to come through the birth canal. But he's going to be 100% God because of the source of the fatherhood. Um, and this girl has a dilemma now. God says you don't think that miraculous things can happen? You don't believe that conceptions like this can happen? Go see your cousin Elizabeth. She's already six months in. And Elizabeth was probably 70, 80 years old. At least 60. She was 60, 70, 80 years old. Had never born a child. And Zacharias himself was probably in that same range, 60, 70, 80. But God was directing her to go to the one place that she could go to to receive the confirmation. I mean, you know, you need confirmation. Tell it, Pastor. I mean, man, when, 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 when God is biting something inside of you, it's hard to talk to other people about that. Yes, sir. Because others don't understand what it is that he's doing, and they can't relate to how you may be feeling about it. But God always has someone that he can hook you up with. Yes, sir. Someone that can relate to what you're going through, someone who can relate to the miraculous thing that he's asking of you. And so he directs her, go, go, go see your cousin Elizabeth. Six months ago, Angel Gabriel visited her, and she's now in her sixth month. Now, I, I like Mary, because Mary just simply said, okay, be it unto me, as she said. And she immediately goes, and she goes to the hill country, and she finds Elizabeth. And what's the confirmation? When, when she sees Elizabeth, the, and, and, and she greets Elizabeth, uh, the babe in Elizabeth's womb Indeed. leaps for joy. All right now. And you gotta know that by now, six months, man, can you see Elizabeth? She kind of toddled around 80 years old, 70 years old. Kind of time begin to show. <laughs> and Mary had to know that that was, that was an incredible experience. And to hear Elizabeth's account. 
about what God had done. Right. We give her what she needs. Mm -hmm. And it'll give her time to think about it. And it'll give her time to begin to get her hands around. Sometimes in the early days of, 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 of godly experience, missionary calls and, 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 and divine sons, when, when God is working on your life and you're trying to talk to your pastor or you're trying to talk to other spiritual leaders to get your mind around what it is that this is going to mean and, and, and how it's going to alter your life and how it's going to interrupt your life, God will put you in the place where somebody can help you. Amen. I had to have some help when, when God was working on me. That's the I had tried to talk to those early on that I thought might be able to help me. But, but they didn't understand the depth of what God was doing. And so rather than being a source of encouragement, they became a source of discouragement. Right. Telling me, oh, don't you do that. God has not called you. And don't you tell anybody that God has called you. Because if you do, you'll be an embarrassment to yourself and you'll be an embarrassment to your family. So it made me hesitate. And God had to use somebody else. Right, <laughs> and and the, the second person that God used, the man had to work with me real hard because he said, see, I know your problem. You're an educated person. Right. And because you're educated, you think that God can't call you. Right. But God is already at work in your life, son, young man. And God will put you somewhere. Anybody know that God put you somewhere? Yes, he will. Did he, did he put you with somebody who confirmed who, who assured you and helped you to understand that this is the work of God, this is the will of God, that you're not losing your mind, you're not beside yourself, you're not tripping, hmm. that God does call. Yes, sir. Amen. After that time with Elizabeth, Mary was ready to go back. But now come to this option. Now comes the height of the blessing. See, when you look at Mary from God's standpoint, you see that a divine messenger was dispatched to her because she was the divine choice. And the divine choice was given a divine message about a divine son that she was going to have. Right. That's from God's standpoint. But when you look at the human standpoint, you see the burden. When you look at it from God's standpoint, you can't see nothing but the blessing of how this girl was highly favored and chosen and selected among all the women who had ever lived in the whole history of the world to be the only one to be exalted to that position. Yes, sir. But from a human standpoint, you see but the burden. Now she's got to come back. And she's got to talk to Joseph, the young man that she's engaged to. The betrothal could only be broken by divorce. And the betrothal could be broken if it was discovered that somebody has been unfaithful. Yes, sir. And Mary has got to come back now, and she's got to say, Joseph, we, 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 we got to have a conversation. I got some news. And, and, and then she tells Joseph, she tells Joseph, she said, listen, somebody stopped by the other day, and now that they are gone, and I'm pregnant. But it's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> After they picked Joseph up off the floor, God has to send that same angel to talk to Joseph too. Right to help him understand that Mary is not lying, that this thing is of God. But you can, you can imagine now the embarrassment that she felt. Joseph, probably being a good man, decides, listen, Mary, you know, I love you, I care about you, you're a sweet girl, and I also, what we'll do, I, I won't tell anybody, we'll just call it off. Now, 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 I want you to see the burden with Mary. I want you to see the, the, the burden of the embarrassment that she feels. I want, I want you to see her as she returns to Nazareth and as she's going through the community and the people are whispering. Oh, that's that girl who says she's a virgin and she says she's going to have a child and she said she hadn't been with a man. Yeah, right. We heard that before. I, I want you to see that burden. Yes, sir. I want you to see the difficulty that this woman has to carry in trying to explain herself to other people 
who really don't want to hear who are really not interested. How can you explain yourself? Hmm. Have you ever tried to explain you to someone else who really don't want to hear it? Who really understands that you really kind of on the quirky side? <laughs> who really think that you have lost it some kind of way? <laughs> you can't explain that to people. Amen. It's a personal burden that you bear. You can't explain the vision that God gives to you. You can't explain always the dream that God is birthing inside of you. You can't help people always understand with perfect clarity what God is up to. And that becomes an internal burden that you must bear. The interruption of your life may have been fine. If the angel had not come, if the angel had not come, the 13 year old girl making plans for a wedding, now she's got to call family and friends and tell them it's off. We're not getting married. It's going to happen a little later. Yeah, y'all, I know you're talking about me. I know what you're saying about me. I know how you feel about me. But it's really true what I'm telling you. You just got to know. That that was such a load for a child to carry. And I want you to understand that you have burdens too. That's right. That song here this morning, that song who may be watching us this morning, Facebook Live, who carries such a heavy burden. You try to raise a difficult child who's disobedient and disruptive. You're in a difficult marriage. And it's such a burden. Hard to put one foot in front of another. And some who bear such a financial burden that you don't know how you're going to make it. Yes, sir. And now they're shutting down things and you might not be working for several more weeks or months. And you're already living from paycheck to paycheck. Difficult. And yet you know you're favored, you know you've been blessed, but now you've got to deal hmm. with this burden. There, there, there are some, there, there, there are some who, who know God has called you. There are some pastors who are holding it there with a message burning in their hearts because the Lord had laid it on their heart, but because of the coronavirus and the church is having to close in some situations, you're having to bear the burden. And I, I want you to understand it, 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 it's, it's not easy. That's right. But but if you stay in faith. In if, if you stay focused, yes, this too will pass. Yes, uh, I want to let you understand that, that there are some things that's got to happen to our nation. And, and, and although God has blessed this nation to be one of the greatest in the world, we are bearing the body now. Yes, and we, we can't have both. You know, you can't have one without having the other. And that's why I want to talk about 7 Corinthians 7, 14. Maybe it'll come up again. Yeah. But, you know, you, there's some repentance that's got to take place. Yeah. 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 And there's some confessions that's got to be made. Yeah. There's some understanding different that, that we, we've got to understand that we've turned away from God. Right. We've turned away from where he has birthed in the nation. The nation was born one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Well, something's got to happen. But we right. got to bear it. So, so God shuts down the world's economy. God shuts down the economic condition. God shuts down the entertainment. That's and right. on, on, on Sunday, right. people got to be at home now. Right. They can't go to the sports arena. Can't go to the ball stadium. Can't, can't, can't go to Disney World. Right can't, can't go to the other sources of entertainment. You, you, you yeah. gotta stay at home and think about it. Yeah. You, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta realize again that you're the blessed. See, what I like about Mary is Mary was faithful. Yeah. Yeah. She was faithful in spite of the burden. She was faithful. 
people to go ahead and go out and walk around and demonstrate her pregnancy. She was faithful throughout the year. Would you, can you imagine having Jesus as your child? Man, could you, can you imagine raising Jesus, a child who was never sassy, who never did anything wrong, who never had any crazy thought, who never mumbled under his breath, who never fussed back, who never mistreated his brothers or sisters, who was always kind to his neighbors and friends. Say my baby. Yeah. Okay. Then when he got me a man, Mary pondered these things and kept all these things in her heart. Yes. And then one Friday, she had to see her son march like a common criminal right. through the streets of Jerusalem yes, sir. to a hill called Calvary. Right. And she had to stand there yes. at the foot of the cross, knowing that she was favored, knowing that he was destined to be the son of the Most High. But yet, in the middle of being so blessed, what a heavy. Heavy burden. Listen, I, 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 I'm grateful for the, the blessing. Amen. But it's also <coughs> I appreciate being the pastor of this church. It's a great blessing. It gives influence and it gives us opportunities that some maybe dream about. But let me tell you, it also comes with a heavy burden. Amen. That, 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 that more lives that you have to be concerned about. That, 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 that more economic concerns that arise. That, that more spiritual needs and hard and one can bear. Right. And, and the heaviness of it all. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad. Hallelujah. Like me. Yeah. That God chose me. Yeah. Because he knew. He, he, he knew that that girl would be faithful. Yeah, he knew. He, he, he knew that she wouldn't drop it. That's right, he knew. He knew that she wouldn't avoid it. She knew that, that she wouldn't run out on the mission because it got tough. All right. She knew that she wouldn't turn her back when others were talking about her. God, no. She knew, God knew that, that she would hold on. And, and, and the only way she could because the Spirit of God rested with her. Yeah. And I want you to know the only way that you're going to make all the way. Endure, huh? enjoy the blessing while it's there. Don't wish the burden away. Endure the burden while you're on your way to the elevation it's coming on the other side of this. this too. America has endured these things before. Somebody sent me a text with a whole list of things. We thought Ebola would take us out. We thought HIV would take us out. Now we think Corona would take us out. But with God, you're a resilient nation. We have some of the brightest and best in medical facilities, but if we do our part, we'll see a miracle of God. Not only in the cure of what's going on, but in what really should be the making of a nation. And it's not making America great again mm. is making America godly. Yeah. Yeah. America is yeah. godly. Yeah. And you'll see the birth, the birth of a new day. Yeah. You'll see the birth yeah. of whatever God is raising up. Yeah. And the only way that can happen is if we need God's spirit. Don't we need it? Yes, sir. Don't you need it? Yeah. I can do nothing without God's spirit. And so I need, I need, I need God's spirit to fall fresh yeah. on me. Yeah. I, I, I can't do this ministry. You can't do it, missionaries.
without God's Spirit. But with God's Spirit, when He comes, when He falls, old chains will be broken. Burdens will be broken. Lives will be put back together. Families will be raised. Sickness will be healed. Disease will be eradicated. Workforce will be elevated. People will come together like never before. If we need your spirit. Yeah. Spirit fall down. Spirit fall down. Spirit fall down. Question today is God the man who has the blessing. Question is can you have more at the same time? You'll be enjoying the blessing. So we're just going to give an invitation.